Good morning. Yeah, y'all. That's a different person up here instead of Miss Mary. <laughs> y'all pray for Miss Mary and Jeff. Um, not feeling well, and I pray for, for Sister Jackie and her brother. And um, but uh, so I told him, yeah, I'd fill in today. If you don't have the Bible, let's, uh, I, I printed one out, and uh, we're going to go. It's called "We Can All Be Fools." When I was growing up, you weren't supposed to say that word. Fool, that's rude. But people say it now; they don't think about it. We're glad you're here. Welcome to Sunday School here at Solid Rock. Today is uh, September 9th. A lot going on today. And um, I'm going to ask Brother John, where is he? There you are. If you'd open us in a word of prayer. Thank you, brother. Amen. Ah, microphone. Yay. If you have a hand out there, if you don't let me know, we've got them down in front. And uh, it says here, we, are, we can all be fools. This is by Doug Smith. It's out of the uh, David Cook series um, back in June of 2016. But I like what the uh, memory verse and all that's involved here is in it. And um, then we took it as Bible basis out of Romans 1, 18, 2, 23, 28 through 32. I didn't print the scripture out on that, but. Uh, focus today is we are all fools who have gone astray. Isn't that true? You ever feel like you've gone astray sometimes or things like that? Is God there? He really is, isn't he? But we do feel like that sometimes we're human. On our first page here, uh, memory verse, I'm going to read the King James Version below first. For uh, Romans 1.20, so I'm in on that microphone. Thank you. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Ooh. And the, um, we'll bring it down a little bit different, like the way this one reads it out above it. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen. Just look around, you can see it. Being understood from what has been from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. Amen. Do his word. Look around. It's all kind of stuff going on, isn't it? But when you look at his omnipresence, he's everywhere. He's, he's everywhere. And uh, when you look around and you, and you realize how, what is it, go to the ocean and realize how small we are? Have you ever seen the ocean? It's so vast and big. So anything that you go through or a foolish thing that happens, sometimes you just can't worry about all that. You know, give it to God, and he'll get you through no matter what. So we're going to uh, discuss how we all act foolishly sometimes and how that can be serious when it involves how we respond to God. That's so true. Um, there's a source we're going to talk about. Uh, Gabby, I think it's Gabby is her name, uh, Douglas, and I in the Rio at the American Cup. Now, I didn't get to watch any of the American Cup or any of that stuff, unfortunately. And, uh, but this was back in 2016, and she won. <laughs> she won. But um, it talks about the Bible news. Landmines are being cleared at one of the traditional sites of Jesus. This is baptism in Jordan, so people can move easily, more easily visit the area. That is good, I can imagine. Um, the next page here. Students will discuss how we act foolishly sometimes and how that could be serious when it involves how, how we respond to God. My foolish actions are open activity. It's on page two there. And I wanted to ask you to describe something foolish thing that you did in the past that you now look back on and laugh about. Dave and I ride in the car a lot together or wherever we go and we talk about silly stuff that we did as kids or adults or just the other day. You know, what was I thinking, you know? You ever done that and you just kind of laugh about it, even though you hate it? <laughs> and there's some things I remember I do not want to remember, you know, but that's okay too. But uh, we do act foolish sometimes. I think it's that car wash song. I can't remember who sings that. And they talk in a lot of the lyrics in the songs that I'm on the job, something about, you know, I can act a fool for a minute, you know, on the job. Sometimes you really can't. <laughs> sometimes you can all have a good laugh at work or at school, wherever you may be, if the teacher's not around, right? But 
it doesn't always come out that well. You'd be acting silly and they get caught. <laughs> then we go, oh no. But here it says, um, sometimes the foolish things we do just become funny stories we tell later. Other times our foolish actions may be more serious at this, as this week's story points out. Um, he was at, a, at the wrong house. And we've heard of those kind of things. The police show up at the wrong house, knock down the wrong door. That's terrible. That's really embarrassing. How did that happen? Now, in a neighboring city, they, I'll tell you this funny, awful story. They tore down the wrong house. Can you imagine if that was your house? <laughs> they tore down it. But the thing was, there were about three or four abandoned houses in this one section of town. Very old houses. And I guess the house numbers, <laughs> they did something. They picked the wrong one. So it wasn't the worst thing in the world. It was going to probably be demolished sometime down the road. But they should have been demolished the one next door. I would not want to have been the one that worked in that office, that, that permit, <laughs> or the one that tore it down. That's terrible, you know. <laughs> but thank God there was no one inside. <laughs> and it was going to be a house that was condemned anyway. But it just, that's just, how could that happen? But it did. So I was just sitting there thinking, well, I'm glad I didn't work in that office. But Lord bless them, because I know that's terrible. But they all worked it out. It, Got in the paper, and then it was away. But uh, it says here he was at the wrong house. It's seriously. A man seeking revenge against an ex-girlfriend went to the house of the individual she was dating and caused over $10,000 worth of damage to the vehicles in the driveway, except that he was at the wrong house. According to the police, A. Keltner, a 20-year-old man from South Brunswick, New Jersey, believed that the residence belonged to a person who was dating his former girlfriend. However, it turned out uh, not to be the house of the intended target. At about 1.15 in the morning, nothing good happens after midnight, right? Your baby mom tell you that. A family member inside the misidentified home heard a hissing air noise outside and looked out the window to investigate. Another family member then went outside and discovered that the tires on his pickup truck had been slashed. The tires on a Suburban in the driveway had also been slashed. A Jeep in the driveway had obscenity scratched on the door and fender. That vehicle's tires were also slashed and the roof pierced with a knife. Page three. I'm late. Surveillance video from the home allegedly showed Kelkar, I'm not, K-E-L-K-A-R, walking around the property with the knife and committing the damage to the vehicles. Around 6.30 a.m. that morning, officers went to Kel Kelter's home and arrested him. They also seized the rented pickup truck he allegedly used during the crime. Oh, me. The man was charged with trespassing and third-degree criminal mischief, in addition to being an unlicensed driver. His bail was set at the approximate amount of the damage he allegedly caused, $10,000. Stories like the one above abound on police blotters. A drunk man goes door-to-door -door harassing residents until he reaches the home of a local police chief. Uh-oh. Um, a man uh, detained by the police swallows his cell phone in order to conceal evidence that could incriminate him. A diner calls 911 to report a false emergency at a restaurant in an attempt to avoid paying his bill. That's terrible. <laughs> while, we were, while we might roll our eyes and chuckle at such stories, with a bit of reflection we might remember a few things we have said or done in the past that might provoke some regret. I think that's all of us, isn't it? So now we have um, there's a talk. We want to discuss some questions here. It says, what is the difference between making a legi legitimate mistake and acting foolishly? <laughs> it's a big difference sometimes, isn't it? Sometimes you're just not thinking it out when you act silly, right? Or maybe tell a joke and somebody walks up and, oh, no. <laughs> Things like that. Legitimate mistake, like I said. The house number on that old house that they incorrectly tore down I don't know. I think the house numbers were pretty similar. And back in probably 20 years ago, that not all these properties had house numbers on them. You know, like now they do. they got all the signs in the streets and everywhere you can kind of find your way around. So that could be, you know, a legitimate mistake because on paper it's written down wrong. Terrible thing. But um, that wasn't something intentional. Um, how do we sometimes convince ourselves that we will, um, that we will escape the consequences of our foolish acts. I just didn't know. <laughs> or I wasn't aware. Did we do that? You know, kind of just make our excuses. 
and uh, why we um, should get out of it because we were acting stupid. <laughs> um, if one of your friends was about to do something foolish, especially something that was against what God wanted them to do, would you try to stop him or her? If so, what would you say or do? Have you ever been through that? You know, in a workplace or a family? You know, I had my, all my kids, when they all get together, and some of their other friends and relatives get together. I had one kid, he just thought it was fun. When we went to the beach house, it was a two-story house, and he thought it would be fun to get, he's 20 years old, I think. He wants to jump off the banister down into the big swimming pool. No. <laughs> he thought that was going to be fun. No. I'm standing there like, because other kids come to, hey, he's going to jump off the banister into the pool. I'm like, why y'all tell him he can't do that? <laughs> he just thought that was funny, you know. But he could have got killed. He could have missed the pool, you know, something bad. He's an athletic kid, but, well, he's a 20-some-year-old. And uh, to me, that's a kid. But uh, I looked at him. I come up there, and I said, I do the best mom I could do. What are you doing? You, he's standing on the bed and laugh and think it's funny. <laughs> I'm just sitting there going, oh, my God. I'm going to have to pull him in or something. But he wasn't trying to be mean or just, he just wasn't thinking. Totally foolish. Totally. And he did old enough to know better. So I told him, I said, if you jump in, you might miss it. You really might. So I gave him all the scenario, how bad it could be. So I didn't know what to do. <laughs> the other kids just standing there like, ah, is he going to do it or is he not? And I just said, oh, God, please help me figure out what to do. And he's a good kid and all, but he got down. He didn't do it. Because <laughs> if he did, I was going to go down and beat him up. <laughs> At least I wanted to. And I was like, well, you try to put me through, acting so silly, thinking that's funny. It's not. <laughs> so you, sometimes you have to s step up and tell someone constructively, hey, man, you better be thinking about what you're doing. I care about you, but I don't want to see you do something stupid. And sometimes they're like just, they just do it. Doesn't matter what you say. But it's hard to know. You just have to ask the Lord to show you what to do to help them. And he can and he will. Uh, let's see here. Let's take a look at the Apostle Paul's rebuke of those who distorted the truth that God had taken them in order to justify their foolish behavior. Um, it says, act wisely. Um, I think this was, can someone find me a book of Read Me, Romans? I didn't print out that out this morning. I think someone's got a Bible in front of them. Romans 1. Someone find it for me. John, have you got your Bible there with the little print one? Mine is stuck over there. Can you see that? 18 to 23, and then we'll get 28 to 32. Yeah, if you do that one, then I'll get you to pick up the other. I have to use the microphone. <laughs> to 23. Okay. Uh, if I can read the small print. Uh, for the wrath of God's of God, the, for the wrath of God is revealed uh, from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest to the uh, to them in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. 28 to 32. 28 to 32. Uh, let's see. Uh, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with un all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, uh, 
uh, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, uh, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which uh, commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Romans 1, 18-23 and 28-32. One part of this is uh, he's not invisible. God knows everything that we do. He really does. He sees everything. And he's true what he says about those things what he doesn't approve of. And as children of the Lord, we need to follow what his instructions are, even if they're not easy sometimes. Because... He's going to look out for us no matter what, right? Amen. He loves us so much. He's going to take care of us. When we're going through a rough time, maybe we acted foolishly. Maybe we jump, jumped in when we shouldn't have. Or, you know, I always like that uh, thing I said, wish I, you know, thought of that before I did this. <laughs> you know, whatever the situation is. But when you are a child of the king, you will know that he is there for you. He'll get you through it. You can go to him and ask for forgiveness. You can go to him and he'll give you strength. And that is so true, he does. Now, you see a lot in this world that's terrible that's going on, a lot of bad things, just terrible in every, every possible part of the world. But God's still in control no matter what's going on. Got to remember that. He's always in control no matter what's going on. And, and a lot of times if you keep going on bad and those that are, just don't know him, you just see him giving up to reprobate mind. They just, he just stopped doing, you know, pray for him. Because <laughs> you see a lot of that, and it is the time, it is a sign of the times. People do things, what is right, what is wrong is right now, what is right and is now wrong. And it's a terrible thing, isn't it? But when you're out somewhere, I had a lady, we were out in uh, a little restaurant, Kentucky Fried Chicken, it's a good place to eat at, isn't it, sometimes? And she was wiping the tables down, and she was humming, and I went, and I recognized the song was a Christian song. And I don't know, anyway, I just kind of spoke to her, felt led to say, like that song. She says, yeah. And, she, and the news came on in, in, the, in the TV in the restaurant, and it said something about some terrible thing people were doing. She said, mm. She said, that's terrible. I said, you know, they used to be considered wrong. Now they think it's right. She said, yeah, that's what the Bible talks about. What was right is now wrong, and what was wrong is now right. That they see that. You see that a lot, a lot. And it's terrible. But you can stand up for God no matter what when you see wrong. Don't be afraid. Don't think of yourself as being foolish for God. Amen? <laughs> Don't be foolish for God. Do what's right for him. But as we continue on here, it says, Act wisely. Um, page 4, 4, we'll be finished up. And uh, it says, uh, we can point to people who insist God doesn't exist and say they are fools, but at times we also may act as if he doesn't exist. Too often we go ahead and do what we want to do because our hearts are not naturally inclined, inclined toward him. For example, we often go along with the crowd and imitate unwise behavior so we aren't ridiculed or out ostracized. In fact, if enough people are believing and doing the same foolish things, then an entire culture can redefine something they are doing that is against God's command is wise. You see a lot of that. We must not follow that trend. Don't follow the trend. Be a peculiar people, as the Bible says. That's what we are. This is not our home. It says, therefore, we must examine our hearts to be certain we are not foolishly disobeying God and rationalizing our actions away. Instead, we should do the wise thing, acknowledge that God can plainly see what we are saying and doing, repent for our actions and words, and then face the consequences. 
The pain that often accompanies genuine repentance may be the best teacher. Amen. That's so true. <laughs> so don't give up. Just learn and keep moving on. <laughs> it says here a uh, question. Uh, in what ways have you been foolish and acted against what God wants you to do? All of us done that. We sit and think on it. No, I don't expect anybody to answer that. <laughs> but I'm in that same boat. <laughs> and we do. And it's awful, you know. You get caught doing something stupid or making a face at somebody, you know, you didn't know they were standing there. Things like that. <laughs> Walk up on something you said. Oh, no. And uh, things like that. But that's, that does happen. But we can turn it around. And God can help you do that. Um, it says here, acknowledge what we have done or are doing, repent and ask God to guide you as you change your attitudes and actions. And we do. And we learn from these things, you know, as children growing up. We learn from these things. You know, as a child, I, you know, uh, remember things like, don't get the stuff, out, don't get the cookies out the refrigerator. That's for later. You know, something mom had baked because we wanted to eat them. You know, or the ice creams in the refrigerator. Don't get it. It's for later. You don't care about later. <laughs> Especially if you're a kid, you just want to eat it. <laughs> So guess what? If you ate it now, we don't get it later. <laughs> so you live and learn. <laughs> but um, let the Holy Spirit guide you in what's going on in your life. Do evaluation. Just go to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, just reveal to me what I need to know to do. You know, something I need to repent of. Or just something I can do to help others to get them through. You may have gone through something and you see somebody else going through something. Uh, or that you've been through. You can help them. Sometimes it's not welcomed, and that's okay. It's okay. At least you tried. You know, just ask God to show you how, and he will. Would y'all excuse me? I have a sore throat thing coming on. <laughs> it's uh, crud or whatever's going around. Every time school starts, we all get sick, right? But uh, <laughs> so pray for everyone. Glad you're here this morning. God bless you for being here. I'm looking forward to a good service today, a uh, good message this morning, and uh, some awesome music coming our way this morning, so I'm looking forward to that. And God bless you for being here. And uh, keep all those ones sick in your prayers. I appreciate it. And um, almost candid. Do you have a microphone back there at all? No. Okay. I got one right there. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's time to close. No. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Mike. So we're looking forward to some good stuff this morning. Amen. <laughs> well, glad y'all are here. Miss Mary be back. X. Sunday, Lord willing, and uh, she's continuing, I believe, in the book of Esther. If you get a chance, read the book of Esther. It's awesome. And she does a wonderful job. I'm glad y'all for being here this morning and uh, working through it with me on the Sunday school lesson. Well, I'm going to pray us out. Dear Lord, we come to you now, Heavenly Father, and we thank you for this day, dear Lord, and for the rain, Lord Jesus, that help, the rain that helped us to, to have what we need. But, Lord, we just ask you to bless all that's here this morning, and we commit the rest of this service to you. In Jesus' name. Amen.